From a diplomatic breakthrough to a frosty standoff in a New York minute, with less than a month until a scheduled summit between President Trump and Kim Jong-un, North Korea abruptly changes course and threatens now to not show up on June 12th. How real is the threat and what now? The panel with me tonight is Steve Rogers. He's a member of Donald Trump's re-election campaign advisory board. Jackie Kucinich is a CNN political analyst and Washington bureau chief for the Daily Beast. Kevin Sheridan is a former spokesman for the Republican National Committee. And Catherine Rampell is a CNN political commentator and Washington Post columnist. Jackie, North Korea now says, I don't know, it's like maybe yes, maybe no, in terms of going to the summit with Donald Trump. The White House reaction today was essentially... Uh, it's it's not a big deal. We are not concerned. I did not sense concern from Sarah Sanders and her statement. I did not sense any concern um, from President Trump in the few words that he gave that he spoke about it today. Is this really not a big deal if the summit is off? I, I think the White House needs to manage expectations here okay. because yeah. there there is uh, when you when you read what experts are saying, when you talk to North Korea experts, they say that this is sort of part of the, the, the game plan for Kim Jong-un, um, that it's not necessarily a surprise that he would play this card. Now, whether it blows up the whole thing, I don't know that we know that yet, but uh, there, it did seem there for a while, perhaps the Trump administration was getting ahead of its skis a little bit, saying that, you know, this is going to be peace in our time. Yeah, well, I mean, we could think about the the arc of where we've gone already on this, Kevin. We've gone from Donald Trump, some Republicans saying Donald Trump deserves a Nobel Peace Prize right now. Not even wait until there's actually a peace deal to now that we're calling the whole thing off. I mean, is the, if, the summit, if the summit doesn't happen, is it a failure on Donald Trump's part? No more so than any other president who uh, has gotten this far with, uh, with North Korea. Look, uh, he's gotten the three American hostages back, prisoners back. Uh, so that's a, a big win. Uh, he's gotten some real movement on the nuclear plan uh, uh, program that they are saying that they're going to dismantle, uh, you know, their testing facility. If that actually happens, that's a huge win. Um, but we don't know. Nobody's, no president's ever tried to meet with the leader of North Korea. So we're in uncharted territory. I'd expect way, a lot more of this. Mm -hmm. They're going to continue to both play the madman negotiating tactic. I think Trump may threaten to pull his uh, pull the meeting as well, and and Kim will do the same thing. I, I just think we we don't know yet. It's I mean, a long way to Singapore. Well, it was very surprising when this came out yesterday that they not only was Kim Jong was North Korea not going to meet with South Korea, but also this very lengthy statement that, that North Korea put out. Are we essentially still in? Are, are we in no different a place today as we were yesterday in terms of this potential? meeting and this potential discussion well, over no video. no i mean it did look like there were there were few questions that this meeting was going to happen now that is more questionable yeah. right i mean it does seem like these calls for a nobel peace prize were a, a wee bit uh, premature and i think donald trump is learning what he seemed to have known uh, several months ago which is that kim jong is kim jong un is not a very honorable person right um, Trump seemed to know that before. Previous administrations seemed to know that before. And then they started having this love fest, and Trump declared that it was going to be peace in our time, and he got a little bit ahead of ourselves. So, um, yeah, I mean, it does seem like this is much more uncertain today than it had been, and that may be partly due to the fact that Trump seemed so eager for this meeting to happen. Well, uh, to Catherine's point, Steve, I mean, just, uh, I think it was... It was last week, right? And time and space just kind of collapses these days. But it was just last week that Donald Trump was saying that he thinks that Kim Jong-un is ready to make change and is bring about change in his country. That Kim Jong-un was very excellent to these three uh, men that he brought back who were being held there. And not so long ago, he was calling him open and honorable. Was the president, do you think the president was, too, was overly optimistic? Not at all, Kate. You know, um, it's no big deal because this is the art of the deal in action. Uh, as, on as, whose part? Kim well, Jong-un's well, part or Donald Trump's part? The, president. Trump's the part. president's been pretty, uh, pretty smart with this. I mean, he's very transparent. He laid his cards out right from the beginning about denuclearization. Kim Jong-un knew that. And keep in mind that at the end of the day, we really have nothing to lose. I mean, he, uh, North Korea is a failing state. The people are starving. Uh, and I wonder, I don't have any facts about yeah, yeah, this, yeah. I wonder what China's thinking about right now. Uh, they certainly would like to see peace in that region because they too have a lot to lose. So, Kate, I believe there's going to be a summit, and I believe at the end of the day, uh, we're going to begin to see at least the beginning of a strong negotiation where 
we will come out, we, the United States and the president, will come out pretty good. I do wonder, though, what, what this all means for National Security Advisor John Bolton, because it was fascinating how the statement spent a lot of time criticizing John Bolton and his positions, more so than even criticizing Donald Trump. I guess we'll just stand by and see. John Bolton, check your voicemail. Coming up, a major document dump in the Russia investigation sheds new light on what Donald Trump...